Hey everyone, welcome. In last week's video, I gave you a quick tour of this case. It's the Shenbro Mycom RM42300 service chassis. And in last week's video, I didn't have this, which is the IC Dock Black Vortex um, uh, four bay hard drive cage. Uh, it's a hot swappable drive cage. And in today's video, we're going to assemble the Unraid server. So as you can see, I already took everything out of my current build. Um, it's laying around here, the PSU, motherboard, CPU, a couple of SSDs, M.2 SSDs on it, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's the Ryzen 7 2700X for the people who don't know what I'm running with. Um, the graphics card, which is a GTX 1070 uh, Ti. And the first graphics card is this tiny thing. It's the GT710. And I only use it to boot Unraid with uh, because I had some problems with the pass through of this graphics card. And sometimes it just gives me an error. Maybe in the future I will have a closer look on that and see if I can solve that problem. Um, other than that, we have storage, uh, two times two terabyte, two times three terabyte, my Western digital drives and uh, another terabyte drive for the gaming VM. And on that hard drive, the games are installed, two SSDs, one of them is the Samsung, it's my caching SSD, a 500 gigabyte 860 EVO. I did a video on that as well lately and a Transcend 256 gigabyte SSD. And that one is used for the Ubuntu server. And I believe the YouTube VM is on it. Uh, yeah, a couple of virtual machines that I don't use that often. So um, those are stored on that as well. We have a well gigabit Ethernet NIC from Intel. It's the secondary network card and for now, a uh, really janky uh, D-Log, I believe. Yeah, a SATA 600 controller, and that's for the uh, fifth hard drive, because I don't have any ports left. Uh, five hard drives, two SSDs, makes a total of seven, and this motherboard only has six SATA ports. So I will get a bit of room on my desk to unbox the Vortex from IC Dock, uh, talk a little bit about that, and then we're uh, moving on with the server build. So this is the IC Dock Vortex. It's a, a four bay hot swappable drive cage. So we have some screws and we will need that. We have a quick start guide and of course the Vortex itself. And this one is hot swappable. It has a nice door with a 120 millimeter pre-installed uh, fan. It's a LED fan, but there's a switch on it so you can turn the LEDs off or turn the fan off completely. Two different switches for that. Also in this front bay door, we have a dust filter. So that one is easy to clean and, and that's quite nice. Then we have one, two, three, four drive bays. And if we pull this lever, we can easily get them out and they will only be fitted on the hard drive with two screws yeah on either side one on the front we have an hdd one two three and four all individual leds for hard drive activity and uh, as i mentioned we have a led switch here high low or off and for the fan as well high low or off then if we move to the back of this vortex we have the back plane. And this one has four SATA connectors for the hard drives and two SATA power connectors um, to power all the four hard drives. Other than that, at the moment, there's not really much to tell about this thing. Um, yeah, it's made out of metal and the drive base on first sight feel a bit flimsy. So I hope that will change once the hard drives are installed. So without further ado, let's get started with the server case swap. Um, any problems I encounter, I will conclude them at the end of this video and yeah, We'll see all the pros and cons of this build. Um, there is a little bit of a problem with these two SSDs because I don't have a drive cage for them. Um, I will just yeah, install them with one screw for now. And in the next couple of weeks, I will look for a hot swap bay for these two as well. So let's get started.
moment of truth. Man, this was a hassle to build. Definitely the most complicated computer puzzle of this year for me. Everything is really, really tight. And at some point I even, well, got myself another power supply. Because I thought it wouldn't fit. But eventually after some tinkering, um, we got it to work. So that's nice. Um, keyboard is in, power is in, HDMI. Scale is a little bit short. Now I hope this works because I had to change the memory modules from A0 and B0 to A1 and B1. So I hope that will work. I had a motherboard where um, it didn't work and you had to occupy the first two slots. So fingers crossed. So let's try it on. Don't see anything. Success! We have lift off. Nice. Okay, and now for the um, icy dock. Man, this thing is loud. Really loud. I'm glad I keep it in the basement. Let's see, smart information. So we have one green drive, we have the Transcend SSD, we have the 860 EVO, that's the caching SSD, and we have a, another SSD, the Western Digital. So three of these four drives don't work. So this is uh, kind of silly. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but right here, is a little switch and apparently that's the on off button for that specific hard drive so each slot does have its own uh, power button and that was causing the hard drives not to show up in the bios and yeah and rate so they were just powered off i totally missed that it does move quite a lot of air so the airflow is good Ah, much better. Yes, three terabyte, three terabyte, two terabyte, two terabyte. We have our SSD and we have the unassigned devices. So the other drives as well. Power down, proceed. Yes. Really noisy. Um, you will hear the difference. Ah, much better. <laughs> So the only thing left now is uh, put the cover back on, um, get it to the basement, uh, boot it up there, and um, yeah, basically I'm done. Um, but let's talk about the build process of this setup. So as for the conclusion, building this beast was not exactly um, all that quick. Um, I started with the IC dock, after that the PSU, then I want to install the motherboard, and I found out that the IC dock was in the way. It would be installed over exactly the RAM modules, and a piece of the motherboard. So I took the power supply out, then the IC dock, then I installed the motherboard, moved the RAM modules from A0 and B0 to A1 and B1. And yeah, you saw it in the video, it was a bit of a puzzle and yeah, then it, it would fit a little bit better. Of course, this is a very compact chassis. So um, yeah, that, that didn't make things easier, especially not with a big power supply, the IC dock, a big graphics card and a couple of hard drives. So room is a little bit limited in this case. After that, I forgot to uh, connect the intake fan. The intrusion detection switch, uh, I cannot connect uh, to this motherboard because it doesn't have a uh, header for that. Uh, same goes for the LAN 1 and LAN 2 activity LEDs. Um, I can't connect them. Uh, also the Intel NIC doesn't have a header for that. 
So um, yeah, we'll just leave those two disconnected. Then the two fans in the back will be replaced by two Delta fans once they uh, arrive and another one in the front as well for the intake. I must say the airflow is quite good for this case, but of course it does make a lot of noise. So probably I will do some tuning with the fan curve and see if we can improve that a little bit better. Otherwise I will still hear this server, although it's in the basement and I'm in the living room it does make that much noise so that is a bit of a thing so yeah last but not least I had to remove these handles from the vortex otherwise the front cover yeah couldn't close and uh, yeah that's a bit of an issue so I just removed them and yeah now it can close perfectly so then the next thing will be a server rack an 18u maybe 20 22u that will fit perfectly in our basement that will be something for next year um, speaking about next year, this will be the last video for 2019. As for New Year's Eve, be safe with fireworks, enjoy yourself, have a blast. With that I will conclude this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe some advice, you can leave them down in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and see you in 2020. Bye!